All right, so today I'm gonna to talk about preserving your life force uh, in the body. I'm gonna talk about energy. I'm gonna talk about important lessons that I've learned in terms of, you know, if you have dedicated your life to living at a high level, and high level meaning you want to embody the, the nuclear energy of God and love in this world, you know, you're gonna to have to care for yourself in a whole new way, you know, at least if you're like me, coming from a place where I wasn't necessarily caring for myself in that way. Um, so I used to practice Ayurveda. I used to be an Ayurvedic practitioner a long time ago now. But one of the things that they talk about is, and many cultures talk about preserving the fluids of the body, not just like semen and stuff and sexual energy practices are very powerful. Um, and I might talk a little bit about sexual energy, but the sweat, right? The way that you exert yourself is very important. And if you are American and perhaps just similarly conditioned from any country into needing to be doing, 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 doing all the time, working, 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 or exercising, 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 um, you know, your mind is moving you to kind of uh, waste very valuable energy. And something that the ego does, like the ego loves to go to extremes. And what happens is if you don't kind of catch on to this, oftentimes people fall ill or they have periods where they're forced to stay in bed, which, you know, believe it or not, a lot of times people still don't, you know, learn the lesson from that. And including myself, this has been like cycles of this that I've, you know, this very deeply ingrained belief that I must always be moving, right? If I don't move, you know, basically I'll die. That's the belief. So I'll relate it to my life a little bit because, you know, I love to tell stories and anecdotes. I feel that they're helpful to illustrate the point. So I'll talk about, you know, I just got back from France and it was a very eye-opening experience for me to spend a lot of time there and to really see how people live, to see that the general health of people, the weight, the energy level, the happiness of people there is, at least in Paris, at least to my perception, it seemed higher than average, um, higher than what I'm used to in the United States. And what I noticed about their lifestyle was a few things. One, for one thing, they're not really big on working out, right? They walk a lot, they, they are more about enjoyment and conversation and, you know, they eat a lot of bread and they drink a lot of wine and many of them smoke a lot of cigarettes, but their health is not, they're not in such a, like an ill state, right? As like many Americans or even other kinds of Europeans. I have this family in Spain and they're even, they're much different than the French, at least from what I've experienced. Um, but it was so eye-opening and healing for me to be there because I realized like, oh my goodness, like on Sunday, you know, a lot of people go with a beautiful basket and they pick a baguette and flowers and they will bring lavender to their home and pick up a baguette and sit in a park and drink a little rosé or maybe just like Pellegrino or no, Perrier, of course. But and, and eat some bread and just relax. Like, and we don't do that here. And it just really like healed me. It healed me like seeing firsthand how not only like the way that they move and the way that they live and the way that they, they're, everybody's out walking every day, especially on the weekend and enjoying each other, sitting at a cafe with friends and just talking and connecting and being slow being slow and um, you know, people tend to dress up there, right? You know, I did not see one person, not one person in lounge wear or in athleisure wear, which I love, right? I've been living in it for the most part for a long time, but I got inspired to like get back into my feminine energy and like, you know, like wear beautiful fabrics and beautiful patterns and and more colors more often. You know, I have a lot of those clothes, but like I spend a lot of time in functional clothing. And I just, you know, I just, I, I was awakened to my own 
conditioning and my own patterning of like, wow, I'm really, as much as I am teaching about energy and about ease, like part of me really is driven by functionality, by productivity. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think, you know, in many of the books of the, the life and teachings of the masters of the Far East and books with Saint Germain, they talk about how America, how it's been known for thousands of years that what is now North America will be kind of the cradle of the new civilization in many ways, and of the spiritual civilization. It's a place where a lot of awakening will happen. They've, they've known this for years. And so I praise and appreciate uh, America very much so. I love America. But, you know, everybody has their own journey. And, you know, to me in my life, observing the French and their ability to enjoy and their ability to slow down and their ability to appreciate beauty, that energy just floods that city, which is why so many artists and um, writers spend time there because there's this mystical energy of appreciation of beauty, unlike anything I've ever felt. I've spent a lot of time in very like energetically, you know, high places like Sedona, which is very cosmic, very like crown chakra energy. But this was different. This was like, you know, it's like life is beautiful energy. Life is beautiful. Life is beautiful. And so, you know, the ways that my ego has kind of wasted my vital life force one of the ways is exercise right and i would invite you to ask yourself how this may be appearing in your life because it's really important the more work you do right to raise your energy to to um live in a certain range of energy the consequences of being out of alignment with the integrity of your whole system are greater so I have not done like formal exercise really in, in like six weeks and I came back home and you know after having like a long day of flying I wanted to spend some time doing cardio and just kind of like moving my legs getting my lymph moving and I did like a long bit of cardio and for the next 48 hours I could not move my adrenals were shot the point the reflexology point in my foot that corresponds to the kidneys and and also the adrenals was hard as a rock my adrenals were shot like and it's like wow i walked all day in paris but it was a different energy it was slow walking it was appreciating it was stopping at the shop it was stopping to look at the opera house it was stopping to have a coffee or stopping to have a juice it's not the same thing as as you know getting as much work in as you possibly can at once it really at least to my body has a pretty severe effect on my body so i'm learning life is teaching me life is teaching me how to live at the level that i want to live at and how everything that i've learned about ayurveda and the our tissues and our fluids keeping that all you know i remember listening to the ballerina i forgot her name but she created the bar workout and of course, when you're a ballerina, a professional ballerina, that's a very vigorous exercise. But after retiring from being a professional dancer, she decided to, she realized that high impact exercise breaks down the collagen and for vanity reasons, right? She doesn't want to age as quickly, but for also her joints, her feet, for everything, she just realized how like catabolic it was to her system. So she, she created this softer way of moving that is actually incredibly, um, you know, in terms of results, it really works to improve your posture and, and strengthen the girdle of your core. And so, but there's many ways that the ego like tires us out with this idea that we have to always be moving or we're going to die or we're always going to be moving or chaos is going to ensue. It can manifest in different ways. It doesn't have to be over exercising. It could be overworking, over socializing. So I would again invite you to ask yourself, how am I leaking my vital life force by doing too much, by not resting enough? A friend of mine was telling me today that, you know, people who were Mr. Universe title winners or whatever, they knew that like the body needed many days of rest in order to gain muscle. And that one of the biggest mistakes that people make in body, uh, 
shaping and everything is that they don't rest enough. And I can attest to that because whenever I go on vacation and I rest more, like I feel better, my body lets go of like water and edema that I tend to collect. I had lots of lymph nodes removed when I had cancer. My body just relaxes so deeply because it's so needed. And on an energetic level, like there, that is happening on many levels, right? It's not only overexercise is causing your body to be tired, but it's about energy, right? It's about energy. It's like, it's like the same thing as, oh, um, I got an email saying that there's a sale at my favorite store, so I'm gonna buy as much as I can. And you deplete the bank account because, you know, your mind is telling you, I need to take advantage of this and do as much as I possibly can right now. So you are depleting your life force because you have a belief that you need to get as much as you possibly can right now. Where the truth is on an energetic level, if you deeply relax, like every level of your being will reflect more health, more vitality, more well-being, more energy, and your ability to hold light, to hold higher levels of energy will be easier on your body. Because take it from me, like I do a lot of, focusing and, and practices and um, I spend a lot of time like in devotional energy and you know it's really raised my energy a lot but then if the ego comes back in and tries to deplete the energy with over exercise or with pushing myself in any way shape or form saying yes when I when I don't want to say yes to something you know doing anything that I don't really want to do on a really deep feeling level, anything that feels like a struggle or a tug or a force, the the consequences are getting greater for me. So, you know, in my life, this has been a very big piece and I'm sure this goes for a lot of other people. And if you can master it, if you can become aware of it and be more interested in vitality and rest and that, you know, this relates to, on the physiological level, hormonal health. One of the gifts of the Kundalini awakening that I've had is that everything I experience is amplified. So I don't have diabetes. I don't have any disease in my body. But any kind of imbalance that's in my body, whether it's hormonal, chemical, I feel it in a very extreme way. It's like, it's like me getting... Th- you know, having to stay in bed for 48 hours after doing cardio for an hour because the universe is showing me like, no, if you want to live at the level you want to live at, like you got to kind of respect the integrity of the cycles of, of energy in your body and, and your life force and what you need and, and keeping it like keeping it right. Keep practice, keeping it, keeping it. In terms of like sexual practices, right? Montak Chia is one of the Taoist teachers of sexual energy practices. A sexual energy is not just for sex, it's, it's creativity. And when you draw it up into the brain, instead of releasing, it awakens your brain and it awakens channels in, uh, channels in this part of your energy system that allows you to channel your higher self. And it really awakens like your subtle senses why because our energy is nuclear and we expel it we expel it carelessly in many ways right for many people people do expel their energy carelessly in sexual acts and i have no judgment about how people live or how people move but what i will say about sexual energy it's nuclear and when you have sex with somebody your psyche literally your psyche and their psyche literally join like literally become one and you are looking out of each other's eyes because your energy is in each other's it's entangled to a very intense degree to the point where you're literally looking through a combination of your and their energy like you're looking through a combination of perspectives a combination of of perspectives and that's pretty hardcore if you think about it you might want to be really picky about what you join with right if you're trying to embody the energy of love and become aware of of yourself on deep levels it it can become harder for yourself if you add chaos to the mix that's one of the ways that you can add chaos to the mix and again i have no judgment 
about how people live, but there's certain like facts of physics and energy that I'm sharing with you that maybe it could enlighten some some things in your life. I have friends who eventually they figured it out, but they were like, they wouldn't understand why they would like kind of go crazy and feel really confused when they were in certain sexual relationships. And it's because they were taking on the psyche of their partner and there's no need to do that, right? You, I would be very particular about what you allow into your life in every way and on every level. So ask yourself, like, how am I depleting my energy? A teacher that I, I absolutely love had a similar story where he was a professional, well, not a professional, but almost like a professional bicyclist. And he had really strong energetic awakenings as well. And he would have episodes where he would get be hospitalized for months at a time. And as soon as he recovered, he would go out on his bike and bike for 50 miles and he would get sick again. Because, you know, the ego is, is momentum, right? And we have like this very strong belief that if we don't stop moving, like we're gonna die or that chaos will ensue or that everything will fall apart when the opposite is true. In fact, I I believe so strongly that if we could really learn to replace this belief with the knowledge of energy and rest and these laws of like preservation, a lot of the masters that I've read about knew how to preserve their bodies for hundreds of years. And I talk about this a lot because I like to energize energize this in the collective like we can learn from these people we can learn from these people they talked about the fluids of the body and and preserving so that's not just the sexual you know sexual fluids that's also the sweat like that's the energy that you use you know the work spent doing anything so the name of the game here is to be efficient and intelligent and use less effort ideally you want to get to a place where you're not really using any effort, but you are, you're using consciousness, right? But in the meantime, to be able to identify, like, how do I, how do I spend a lot of energy? Do you eat in a way where your body's trying really, really hard to digest? I, right, I've mentioned this in another video, in another video, I was a vegan for so long, but my body burns food really quickly so even though i don't have diabetes and i don't have any endocrine diseases i experience the symptoms of insulin crashes as if i were diabetic in a very strong way and no matter how much fruit or raw food i eat like no matter how much i eat or how often i eat i experience these crashes and so when I read this book by Gopi Krishna called Living with Kundalini, he explained, you know, he was an Indian man who was a vegan for a long time, but he had to start eating meat to stabilize his experience. So if what you are wanting is stability, vitality, flexibility, right? And flexibility meaning, you know, like yoga, for example, is actually incredibly powerful to open the energy channels, not just the fascia and all the physical things, but the body, you know, when it's tight and when it's contracted, energy doesn't move as easily. And then it will dam up in a certain area, be reflected in the neck, in the hips. And so opening your body, focusing more on opening and flow and vitality and rest and and strength right there's nothing wrong with lifting weights there's nothing wrong with with anything but just be real with what you need and focus on those qualities have an intention to say i want to be vital i want to be i want to have my energy for myself i want to i want to radiate we are radiators like the sun we radiate energy we radiate our energy if you use it all to digest maybe unhealthy food or to do too much exercise or to do stressful work or to interact with people that are very draining to you 
you, your radiation, which is such a powerful awakening mechanism, right? Our radiation, if we are in ourselves as love and God energy and we're radiating that, like that is the optimal goal, at least for me. But if I'm spending it and spending it and spending it, I, I end up having to recover, 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 recover. And I'm actually kind of sabotaging my awakening and my ability to hold light. I have a very strong desire to hold as much light as I possibly can, to radiate as much light as I possibly can. And right now, life is showing me in a very emphatic way that I have beliefs that like, well, maybe I won't be lovable if I don't keep my body in a certain shape or if I don't like, I won't be loved, right? And that's very deep for me. Or I should say it's, it has, I've practiced it a lot and I've ignored it and I've just continued certain behaviors that I know very well are draining my energy. So I'm at this point where I'm done. I'm done. I just had a demonstration where I tried to do an innocent hour of cardio, right? That might work for other people. You can't compare yourself to anyone, but for me, boom, put me in bed for 48 hours. So it's not happening anymore. I can't, right? If I want to live the way that I say I want to live, I have to be in integrity with that intention. And that means being very aware and careful and tender with what I truly want. The essence of what I want is to be vital, to radiate love, um, to have the energy to remain completely and intensely present with my experience. When you drain your energy, you know, that's, that's a kind of disservice that you're doing to the world because your presence isn't here anymore. Your presence isn't here when, you're, when your energy is drained. Sometimes the mind turns up the volume simply because you're not eating properly, simply because your prana is low. This is about how do I keep my prana high? How do I keep it high? Ask the universe that question for you personally and let it show you the answers. I am getting answers from everywhere. I, I was introduced to an Instagram account called the Glucose Goddess. Um, and that was a perfect thing for me to see because she, she talks about even if you're not diabetic, even if you don't have a disease, but you're experiencing, you know, exaggerated symptoms of glucose and insulin uh, imbalances and adrenal fatigue, here are some ways that you can help yourself, right? Having dark greens before a carb having a vegetable before a carb reduces the insulin hit by 75%, which is a lot, you know? So for me who eats yams and sweet potatoes and rice all the time, which I love, like the simple act of like having some Brussels sprouts before can, can intensely improve my well-being and my energy level and my, the quality of my rest. So I'm allowing it in now, right? I've had enough, <laughs> I've had enough, and I'm allowing it in now. So I wanted to share this. I wanted to share what I learned in Paris. I think travel can be so eye-opening and helpful to humans to see how other people live, to see how where you live, like you might not see, like I've known, I've seen this belief a million times. I felt it in myself, but I've just overlooked it, overlooked it, overlooked it. And I feel like this trip really healed my mind on a very deep level, just feeling the joy of, of being in the beautiful life, in the life is beautiful energy, sitting in the Tuileries garden and just sitting on a bench and eating a sandwich and feeling like so happy to be alive that's what I want. That's what I want. You got to be real with what you want and you have to be in integrity with it. I'm not telling you how to live or what to do. I'm just sharing anecdotes from my own life that may or may not be valuable to you. Um, you know, another way that people really expend a lot of energy is impatience. Impatience and doubt. Why am I not healed yet? 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 Doing all the research about why you're not healed, like whether it's from a physical condition or a psychological condition. And there's a certain level of helpfulness to that, more so with the psychological aspect, not so much in my experience with the physical. WebMDing everything and doing that, to my experience, is, you know, largely unhelpful. Like, I'm not gonna say totally, that's never true. But people spend a lot of energy 
always in the vibration of the question, the vibration of the doubt, the vibration of the question, of the question, of the question, of the unwillingness to release the perception of flaw, not willing to just say, it is what it is, whatever it is. Now I can put my energy and attention elsewhere and, and let the healing happen on its own, right? That is a major way that we expend energy. So that's my message for today. Ask the universe, like, how do I, how do I spend my life force in ways that are draining me? I'll do another video on this because even when I just said that, all these other examples came in, but I, I want to rest now, so I'm going to. And um, I hope you have a beautiful day.